Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Nathan Thompson. Thank you. Right, guys, I have to start this out because I've been up here for about a week in Dallas helping put together this conference. These people work all day long for free so that you guys could have top-notch display. And um, it, just please, round of applause for everyone working the event. You guys are awesome. Yep. My hat is off to you guys. Uh, Mark, you did a great job, and I appreciate you not talking about anything I'm going to talk about, so that's awesome. Uh, guys, I run the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion on Facebook. We've got 125,000 members, and I believe there's more members. I think they're shadow banning the amount of members that we have, but we've got about 100 moderators and administrators that help run the group. We do not allow cursing or insults. And a lot of people have come up to me here and said, hey, Nate, uh, I'm in your group. And I said, I, it's not my group, guys. It's our group so that we could figure this thing out. Because doing it on your own is not easy. So I wanted us to work together. And the thing has exploded. And uh, please, if you're not in there, join the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion and do this. Add all your friends. To the group. I started the group and I added all my friends. We had about 1,600 members and the group declined for a couple weeks because people were like, what am I doing in a flat earth group four years ago because nobody was talking about flat earth. But some people stayed and then the flat earthers started to join and they started to add friends and it has blossomed into what it is now. I do want to shout out all the administrators and moderators for helping with the group. Um, it's because of you guys I can sleep at night. So thank you so much. Uh, I've done over 200 meetups all across the U.S. Uh, I think flat earthers are some of the most open-minded, humble people you can run into. Humble means willing to learn. And if you're willing to question uh, the reality of where you live, you are a humble person. So uh, I've also what I call flat smacked uh, about 10,000 globe earthers. And I, I do it on video for you guys. I put it on my YouTube, Nathan Thompson, so you can see their reactions and see that they don't have any good arguments. It's quite comical. I think it's some of the best reality TV out there. Also, uh, I've been on MSN, Daily News, New York Post, and they all lie, like every single time. So if your media here, like the lying thing gets old. I don't represent the Flat Earth Society at all, so please stop sending people there. Like, just do your job and report the truth. That would be so great for us. Yeah. Uh, real quick, just so you guys know me a little bit better, my story is, um, I, I was a young kid, I grew up in Orange County, California, and I was being taught the heliocentric model, and it was because of that I had a conversation with a God I didn't even really believe in. I had all my Christian friends telling me that he loved me. And I said, well, if you are light years away and you put us on a ball in space, how much do you really love us? Because anyone I love, I don't want to put light years away. I want them to be near and dear and close to me. I want to at least travel and go see them once a year. But this idea that we were lost in space caused me to be an atheist for about eight years. And then I went to school, couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I got into personal training. And then I started studying applied neuroscience and biochemistry. And one of the smartest people I'd ever met was the second person to introduce me to Flat Earth. First one was B.O.B. And I said, what is this guy talking about? These rappers are, this has to be a joke, right? And, and everyone is allowed that response, guys. So you got to let people have that response, that initial knee-jerk reaction, like, oh, this is so dumb. Ha, 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 I'm going to laugh at you. Cool. We all did that. Yep. Let them have that once or twice. But then the smartest man I knew told me that the earth was flat. So it took me about five minutes of looking up videos, and I knew there was something here. And then I didn't sleep for about three days. And right, who's been there? The no sleep phase of flat earth, right? Almost everyone raises their hands. Okay, great. So, and then after that, I said, I don't want to be the guy pointing people to YouTube videos. I want to go do my own test. So if my friends say, well, Nate, why do you believe it's flat? Because you cannot talk to a globe earther without them saying the B word within the first five or 10 words of the conversation because it is all religious cult rhetoric. So, oh, do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? It's like, no, no, let's get away from the beliefs. 
move towards observable, testable science. That's what we should be discussing, not the B word, okay? So, uh, and, and with the activism, guys, real quick, uh, I think we spend too much time trying to convince friends and family when we should move on to someone else, someone who wants to hear the information. I, I, one of the things I say is, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. And so people tell me all the time, Nate, uh, my, bro, my uncle Bob, uh, I'm trying to convince him it's flat for six months, but he thinks hurricanes prove Coriolis. And I say, go talk to somebody else besides your uncle Bob. Uh, and here's what I do. I recruit everyone around Bob to Flat Earth, and then they harass Bob, and I don't have to. <laughs> so that's what I do. Um, and guys, real quick, you, you don't have to know that God is real to believe or know the Earth is flat, but I just want to share a couple scriptures before I get into my presentation because I, I think it's relevant to everything I'm going to talk about. Uh, the Bible says the beginning of knowledge is to fear God, and I, I think what that translates to is to hate sin, not hate sinners, but hate sin. And uh, Psalm 2 says, why do the nations rage and plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth have taken up arms against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and cast them asunder. So the elite have a plan against God. That's why when I walked into flat earth, I was not like, well, why would they lie to me about the shape of the earth? This is so weird. I know that the people who run the world are evil. Right? They're not good people. 9-11, uh, vaccines, GMO, you know? Uh, this is all stuff I knew prior to Flat Earth. Secret societies and occultism and all that stuff, you know? It's, it's not easy sometimes um, being a truther, that's for sure. But... There is hope because it says in Psalm 2, right after that, that God sees their plans and he laughs. Right? Yeah. So we need to have that perspective, right? Like there's a plan and God knows it's going to be good and he's laughing at all this nonsense that they're putting out there, guys. So I try to have that same philosophy. And uh, love is patient and kind. It's not jealous, boastful, proud, or rude, does not demand its own way is not irritated, keeps no record of anything anyone ever does wrong, does not rejoice in iniquity or lies, but rejoices in the truth, and love never gives up, never loses hope, is always faithful, and endures all things. And there's three things in there I want to talk about. Uh, love does not demand its own way, it's not irritated, and keeps no record of anything anyone ever does wrong. And I think if we as truthers adopt that as our philosophy, like whatever your friends say, you're not going to get irritated. <laughs> Whatever your friends say, you're not going to keep records of. And we don't demand our own way. We don't demand Uncle Bob gets it right now. So I think that would just move our activism and move the movement forward so much if we stop getting irritated, stop trying to convince people, and just plant seeds and move forward. And so, guys, there's over 200, thank you, yeah. There's over 200 scriptures that point towards a flat stationary earth. And Jesus walked into church and flipped over tables. So what I'd like to do with my speech is um, flip over some tables over at the NASA department. So um, let's get right into it. This is where most people think they live. Uh, spinning, tilted cartoon ball. I run the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion. And this will be a compelling review of modern and biblical cosmology. Warning, this presentation contains content that some people may find disturbing. I don't care. One, no one's asking you to believe what you're about to see without questioning it. But at least hear me out, okay? Listen to what I'm saying. If you're a Christian, search the scriptures. If you're not a Christian, do your own research. And if you are a Christian, do your own research because the Bible says, test all things and hold fast to that which is true. Cosmology. The science and origin and development of the uni-verse. Uni, singular, verse, spoken word. So we all live in one spoken word. But who spoke it? That's a good question. Um, this is what mainstream science will teach you. A uh, violation of the first law of thermodynamics. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. So they'll tell you at the beginning of the science books that all life and trees and uh, organic and non-living matter came from an infinitesimal dot 
about the size of the period at the end of this sentence. That's what they say in the textbooks. And then they'll tell you that everything's orbiting around the sun, the sun's blasting through space at 500,000 to 1.3 million miles an hour, so we travel roughly 20 to 35 million miles a day, and we don't feel a thing, right? Brilliant. So, do you know, or do you understand this modern cosmology as well as you think you do? I, I would submit with the 10,000 people I've talked to and done activism with, globe earthers don't know their own religion at all. Like, at all. So, we need to educate them on the globe earth and the flat earth, guys. I can't tell you what's wrong with it, you just gotta see it for yourself. First question I want to pose to you guys is, does the Earth spin 1,040 miles an hour? Does anyone in here, by a show of hands, think the Earth spins 1,040 miles an hour and is brave enough to raise a hand? All right, cool, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you a question later, because you were brave enough to raise your hand. So how would a spinning Earth affect our atmosphere, guys? I have a question for the gentleman who raised his hand. Would it cause it to rotate as one cohesive body? Or would the Earth work as a giant blender? What do you think? See, this is what I, oh, let me repeat. Does the atmosphere move with the Earth? Or does the Earth blend the atmosphere and the atmosphere moves separately from the Earth? The atmosphere moves with the Earth. Excellent. So, let's look at both of them real quick. If the atmosphere moves with the Earth, with my man, uh, that's not what mainstream science teaches at all. They teach that Earth has a Coriolis effect and that the atmosphere moves separately from the Earth. Check out Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter. He talks about field goals being made because of the rotation of the Earth moving separately from the atmosphere. So this is what I mean when I say Globers don't know their own religion, guys. So let's look at if it moves with the Earth, there's a problem with that the atmosphere would have to increase in speed as you get farther away from the Earth in velocity. Guys, this is insane because there's no force that would drag the air sideways because don't forget, everything's pulling towards the center because gravity is pulling everything towards the center. So there's nothing that's pulling it sideways at all whatsoever. And that's also not what mainstream science even teaches, uh, even though those are all lies. So what natural force could do this? A column of air will not move as one cohesive body as a result of moving back and forth through the air as a result of the Earth spinning a thousand miles an hour. So, for example, if I take this piece of paper and I wave it side to side, the air at the ceiling is not also moving side to side. That's not how fluid dynamics work, okay? So I choose to reject this hypothesis. You guys can believe it if you want, my man, okay? But not what we observe. The atmospheric blender. So what would really happen if the atmosphere, uh, to the atmosphere if the Earth spun, guys? What, happened, what would happen is the air closest to the surface would move faster than the air away from the surface and you would get a blender type effect. So it's an indisputable law of fluid dynamics. If the Earth spun 1,040 miles an hour, like that. Consequences of spinning Earth and atmosphere. Guys, we've all looked at airplane flights. I saw one person raise his hand that thinks the Earth is spinning globe, so I'm gonna breeze through this really quick. Um, basically, if the Earth was moving separately from Earth's atmosphere, it would be really tough to travel on planes. Also, you would have a difference in journey times east to west than when you travel west to east. That does not happen. Also, the Federal Airline Administration trains pilots and air traffic controllers on what's called a target generation facility. It's a simulator for the Earth. It's a flat Earth, a non-moving Earth, and the third thing that's real interesting is they negate a gravity vector in the software. So flat, stationary, with no big G. Good stuff. 
Uh, there's simply no way commercial plane travel would be possible if the Earth were rotating 1,040 miles an hour, but you guys can believe what you want. Smoke on a moving surface behaves like this, guys. Smoke on a stationary surface behaves like this. And then also you've got sometimes cloud formations are moving different directions in the sky. You've got Sirius, Cumulus, Cumulonimbus, lenticular clouds, um, and sometimes there's no wind at all. So, consequences of spinning Earth in atmosphere, guys, I want to strap a rocket to this thing, and I want to move it like 1,040 miles an hour. Now, what do you guys think would happen to the people, the hot air balloons, the airplanes? Of course, they're just going to go flying off. Duh. I mean, so, I mean, this, it, it gets really basic, guys. I mean, this, this stuff is not hard to understand. It's that people have vain religious superstitions and they want to believe the earth is a globe. So, so why do you think we, so why do we think that 1,040 miles per hour would not affect our lives, guys? That's five miles per hour, it's fun. 60 miles per hour, you lose your lunch. 1,000 miles per hour is just a walk in the park, right? <laughs> For that matter, what would the oceans do on a spinning? Guys, they teach us that the earth's a pair because of the rotation. So if the rocks are pulling outwards because of centrifugal force, how is the water not pulling outwards towards the equator? It, 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 when I first looked at this, I go, how do we have land around the equator? The water should be pulling out towards the sides. Towards, but none of that happens because the Earth doesn't rotate, in my opinion. 2017 solar eclipses reveal the impossibility number two, guys. Um, this eclipse right here, August 21st, 2017, went from Oregon, traveled west to east to South Carolina. Now, let's pull up Solar Walk from the European Space Agency. Have you guys ever heard a Glober say, where's your model? You guys ever heard that? Where's your model? Where's the flat earth model? Where's the Glober's model, guys? Because it is not working out at all whatsoever. And this is courtesy of ESA. This is European Space Agency. So what you do is you line up the moon on the day of the eclipse. You zoom in so that the sun is directly behind you. And then we're going to click play. And, and something's interesting is going to happen, guys. The moon is going to move from east to west. Not west to east. Not starting in Oregon. And ending in South Carolina. So during an eclipse, the earth must just reverse itself for that to happen. Right? Uh, all solar eclipses start in the west and go eastward. What? Map of the next 10 annual and solar eclipses. Guys, you can look this up yourself. Here's another one you could do yourself very easily. Impossibility number three. You go to College Station, Texas, lay down on your back, look at the sky, pick out a couple stars, and then six months from then, lay on your back, pick out a couple stars, and see if they're completely different or all the same. And let's not forget, that sun is traveling a half million miles an hour, right? So we're January 1st, July 1st, could any of the same constellations be seen, guys? Let's pretend that this podium is the sun. Nighttime's gonna be over here January 1st. Now I'm orbiting, I'm orbiting, I'm going around the sun. Now I'm over here. July 1st, this is nighttime. This should be an entirely different night sky than what I saw over there, but it's all the same stars. The sky's a map and a clock. God said it's for signs and seasons, and every ancient civilization knew this. They were making maps of the sky. So, <clears throat> does the earth spin? You decide. Is the Earth a globe? Okay, this is the next thing I want to talk about. Downward curvature, tangent to our feet, in all directions. Does anybody think there's curvature? By a show of hands, brave enough to admit in a room full of flat earthers, the Earth's a globe? My man, same guy, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm proud of you, dude. Let's get, I'm glad you're here. 
You're going to learn so much this weekend. I promise you, dude. I, I did a speech in South Korea, and there was one guy in the stands and, uh, and, and who was a glober all day, right? And I went up to him before my speech, and I said, I'm going to flatten you during my speech. And I was just joking, you know, because I, I thought he was a staunch glober who's just like, no, rejected flat earth. Because at this point, there are no globe earthers. It's just flat earthers and anti-flat earthers. And the anti-flat earthers are just playing with themselves, guys. So, um, so, but at the end of the thing, I wanted to do a selfie with all the flat earthers. And I said, hey, buddy, can you come take a picture? Um, he goes, no, I want to be in the picture. I'm a flat earther now at the end of my speech. Yeah, and we went out to dinner, and he's just shaking his head going, man, I got to unlearn everything I've learned. And da -da -da. I go, I know, man. We've all been there, dude. It was funny to watch. Um, so you're going to be a flat earther by the end of my presentation, by the way, just letting you know. Uh, so here's the curvature, guys, the curvature chart. Pull up AutoCAD, um, Sagita, Pythagorean Theorem. You're all going to get relatively close to 8 inches per mile squared, which is also 0.666 feet per mile squared. Right? And the tilt, allegedly 23.4 degrees, the other angle on a 90 degree angle would be 66.6. .6. And we got a sun, we orbit around at 66,600 miles an hour. And big G is 6.67. I mean, <sighs> all right, guys. You feel my pain here? Um, here's an experiment any can do, uh, Chicago, Illinois. This famous, guys, famous experiment. I've been there with Rick Hummer. Rick Hummer went there with Rob Skiba and did this. I flew in a helicopter from Kenosha to Chicago from 52 miles away with an infrared camera. And just as we got above the tree line, you could see every building in Chicago from 50 miles away. I mean, so anyone can do this stuff. Uh, the argument here that I'm trying to make, guys, is that we see way too far. And what we do see, we see way too much of. And the, the globe earthers will explain this by telling you, what do they tell you guys? It's a, yep, good, excellent. You guys do your homework, dude, I love this stuff. All right, so I'm just breathing through this, guys, because anyone can do this math, find out how far it is, what's the curvature formula of the earth, how much it should drop, but we see it, it's right there. And the news will tell you it's a mirage. There's no towering. There's no waving. It's not hovering. It has none of the characteristics of a mirage, but that's what they'll tell you it is. And then also, uh, Joshua Nowicki, this is that picture anyone can pull up on Google Maps and go to New Buffalo, pick this picture up, look at it, analyze it yourself. But that's from about 49 miles away, 50 miles away. The Joshua Nowicki's was even farther away. And with Joshua Nowicki's photo, the, the whole skyline should be 900 feet below Earth's curvature. So I know um, all you guys know we should see way too far. Just trying to cover the basics for someone who's new to flat Earth and hasn't looked at this. And also perfectly flat horizon, guys. The Globers will tell you that uh, it's one degree of Earth curvature for every 69 miles. But when we look at 69 miles on the horizon, there is zero degrees of curvature. It's always a flat horizon. So uh, I call it like a religion of doublespeak. If you've ever read 1984, uh, doublespeak, it's, they can't say two sentences without the second one contradicting the first. So there's that famous picture by Joshua Nowicki. That's <laughs> where the curvature of Earth should be, guys. Nothing below this line should be seen if we were on a globe. And you know what I've heard? This is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Sean Hawkins on YouTube told me, but we can't see it every day. <laughs> I said, dude, you can't see your car in front of your house if it's foggy, if it's really foggy. You, know, you can't even see the street lights out in front of your house. Does that mean that overnight your earth curved and then flattens out? The arguments are so ridiculous, guys, so ridiculous. So I'll agree, you can't see it every day. It's because of atmospheric conditions. The only reason that Globe Earthers believe in an apparent curvature, an actual curvature, but it's apparent. It's an optical illusion. Happens for a number of reasons. You could have foreshortening. Smaller objects in the foreground causing larger objects in the background to disappear. There's something called wave shoaling a lot of people aren't familiar with. Um, with the tides, there could be bulges because of topography under the water. So you think high tide is, is three feet, and it's actually six feet. And so you're doing observations, and the numbers aren't correct because you're not aware of the wave shoaling. Then you have refraction. 
Also, glare in the background can cause objects in the foreground to disappear. You have inferior and superior mirages. And so mist, dust, smoke, these are all reasons that things could disappear. How did I jump out of the presentation there? And these are all reasons that things could disappear, but there's only one reason for, there we go, it's Earth curve. According to the Globers, there's no, more, no towering, there's no dust, mist, smoke, there's no refraction, it's just Earth curve. Go to the curve calculators, the only reason things disappear is not angular resolution limit, it's an orthographic Super Mario vision where they think that we could see forever and that there's no medium causing light attrition or the bending of light. It's got to get back to the basics with the atmosphere. So don't let them straw man you with an argument, guys, that the Earth doesn't have an atmosphere because we live in a medium and it's constantly changing. The Earth's atmosphere is a closed dynamic system and the gas in it is inhomogeneous and anisotropic. So that means it's different in all directions and it's constantly moving around. And so, yes, we have a gradient because temperature variance during the day. So atmospheric conditions will change hour by hour, guys. And, and Globers will tell you that's the Earth curve changing hour by hour. It's insane. Travis knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Lighthouses, guys. I'm not going to touch on every single one of these, but again, we see way too far. Laser observations, mirror reflection observations, guys, those ones are cheap to do. Get a mirror, use the sun, and just reflect it from a long distance over a body of water. The week after I debated Mick West in Vegas, he changed his curve calculator website so that in red letters it says, note, observations close to the floor over water are not good. Is it? Yeah, a week after that. So uh, apparently, uh, it's, you can't, the Earth curve calculator doesn't work if you're doing the test over water and you're close to the ground, which is our whole argument, guys, is that when we have a, a minimal observer height, we see way too far. So those are just some examples. Some of those should be 1,000 feet behind Earth curve. Anybody here familiar with Jay Tolan? Yeah? Shout out Jay Tolan. Um, he did a test from Malibu to San Jacinto, uh, observing Mount S San Jacinto. And I'll show you guys this. This will blow you away right here. It's 123 miles away during the day. Now let's flip on the infrared. Bam. There's the whole thing. So infrared cuts through a lot of the atmosphere. Um, and a lot of people are doing conversions with their P900s and P1000s just so they can get the infrared. Right here, 275 miles, Bar de Crens. It's the world record photograph, guys. We're looking at 50,000 feet of missing Earth curve. But you can't see it every day. <laughs> right? Here we go. Uh, world record microwave. Link distance. These microwave towers were 50 feet off the ground. And, um, I think the link was uh, about 150 miles. Something that's interesting about microwave repeaters that a lot of people don't know, it is line of sight, but it's not a laser line of sight. The microwave's going through what's called a fretinal zone. So the wave travels up and down. So the wave has to have zero obstruction the entire time it's going, completing that up and down. So if there's any obstruction from Earth curvature, that would have to be accounted for, but not accounted for at all whatsoever they're doing these things 50 feet off the ground, 150 miles away. So they did some tests, uh, Florida, flatter than a pancake, and they thought that was interesting. So they tested about six or seven more states, found that those were all flatter than a pancake too. Professional surveyors uh, did a test to see if buildings are farther away at the top than at the bottom. Because when buildings and bridges are built, they use a plumb bob, and the plumb bobs are always parallel to one another and perpendicular to the Earth, but if gravity pulls all things towards center, then the plumb bobs would be splaying outward like spokes on a wheel, and buildings would lean away from each other. We do not observe this. So, 
Celebrate Truth. Go follow him on YouTube. Uh, guys, this is a two-hour presentation. If you want me to come to your church, you want to come to your school, you want to do a presentation in your area, let me know. I got this all ready, but for time, I got to cut it short. So I apologize about that, guys. We got a ton of great speakers, though, by the way. You guys are going to learn a lot. I know all these people personally, and they're ace. Everyone who gets on stage deserves it. They, they do a good job. So shout out all the freaking speakers, dude. Yep. You hear boats go over a curve, guys? No, they don't. Zoom in. It's still there. Is the earth a globe? You guys are going to have to decide. Yep. Mm. So, guys, real quick. L love is patient and kind, right? So when we're sharing this, have that in your heart, you know, that we need to uh, deliver the truth with love. And then also sharing is caring. Yeah, who's, who's heard me say that before? I say that almost every single day. Sharing is caring, right? If you don't share, you don't care. And we need to not be selfish with the truth, guys. So a lot of people, you're just taking from the community, and you should be giving more. So uh, if I'm speaking to you, I hope that resonates. And also, the only barrier from the truth, guys, is the preconceived notion. You already have it. So if someone thinks 2 plus 2 is 5, and they're convinced that 2 plus 2 is 5, and the earth is a tilted spinning globe, you're just going to have to let them have that, you know? Um, like I said, I, I used to be in sales. Professionals sort and amateurs convince. So I, it, take the flat smacking, the, the time we share. I, I spend about 30 seconds to two minutes sharing flat earth and answering their questions, and then I move on. So uh, you can lead a globe earther to flat water, but you can't make them think critically about the shape of the earth. Yeah. Yeah, guys. And um, I'm going to cut it a little short here because, dude, we got a busy day. But uh, store treasure in heaven, right? So let your left hand not know what your right hand's doing. Try and do so much good, guys, that people would get lost for weeks on YouTube trying to see what you guys are up to and what you're doing. And that's my prayer is that we would all take this and run with it. Honestly, I've heard this a million times from people. They said, Nathan, if everyone did what you did, this would be over. And I believe that, you know? If all of us went and shared with 10,000 people that the earth is flat over the next couple years, imagine the change we would see. People would start eating differently. Vaccine companies would go out of business. Yeah, all these major, yeah. All these major movie companies that are putting out violence and sin and death and gore, they should all go out of business too. Yep. Um, so there's, where there is no hope, the people perish. And I want you guys to know, God laughs at their plans, dude. So when, when, you, when you feel like, you know, there's too much evil in the world or this just gets too much, hit me up, okay? Because I'll have a story for you, I promise. But... Just know that, that God has a plan, and if you're part of it, it's good. And I'm so honored to be here with you guys. Please come say hi. Give me a hug. I love you guys. Robbie Davidson, thanks for asking me to speak. And uh, I'm going to get out of here, dude. Thank you so much. I love you guys.